I want to start out by illustrating something that my manager illustrated to me about a decade ago. I got started in the industry. I'm going to share my story a little bit. But I was in a meeting, a recruiting meeting, and my dad's always been in the industry, so I was, you know, recruited by him, I guess you could say. But in, the, in that meeting, he had 10 people stand up. Okay, so we got five here, and let's get this first five here. Let, let, if, if you guys can stand for me real quick, all right? Yeah, 10, perfect, perfect, thank you. So he had 10 people stand up. This is day one of my insurance career. And if everybody, could, if everybody but Marlon can have a seat. <laughs> he said, and, and, and he, he didn't leave me standing, right? But he said, nine of you will fail in your first three years. Like, this dude, this dude doesn't know me very well, you know, right? Just like Marlon. Thank you, buddy. 92% of insurance agents fell out of the industry within their first three years. P&C, life and health, the works. It's sad. It's horrible. It's a joke. And I believe with people like Nate Offord on your team, it's going to be a lot harder to fail. Would you agree? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. All right, so there's one way I start every keynote, every training, every speech, and that is I've got to get my energy up and moving so this next 35 minutes isn't horrible for you, okay? You good with that? Yeah. So there's one thing I do, and I'm going to have you help me a little bit, which is every time I start a training, meeting, breakout session, whatever, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have you do that with me back, all right? We're going to wake up a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm an energy guy. I believe energy is everything. Okay, so can you help me with that? Yeah. In just a second. You good? You can help me? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so my dad's been in the business almost 30 years. I got started as an intern when I was 19 years old. Calling out of a phone book for a veteran agent. Making cold calls. And, and, and really not even supposed to be doing that, calling out of a phone book, but... I didn't know any better, you know, shouldn't have me do it. <laughs> Reading a horrible script, people hanging up on me, people cursing me out, you know, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing, no skill, no experience. Stayed an intern for a little while, and I'm someone that is a, has a lot of belief in myself. So I said, you know what, if this dude can do it, it, it the kind of money he's saying he's making, I know I can too. So I mean, I'm, 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 at that point, I'm 20 years old, I'm in college, playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester, games, tournaments, practices, and I became a full-time insurance agent. But you'll learn, and what I'm going to talk a little bit about is I'm a goal guy. So I said, I established a goal. I wrote out, I want to earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance industry. I bet less than 10%, tenth of a percent probably do that. I wrote it out dated it, signed it, put it up on the wall of my cubicle. And every day I went about to make that a reality. But I'm in college, I'm playing basketball, I'm, taking, I'm, I'm going to school. I could have made up a lot of excuses to not make 100K my first year, correct? Instead, I got a little creative. I would bring over college kids from my local Baptist Bible college to the office. We would all make cold calls together. And I would give them a script and a phone and, and some data and, and, and some money and some cash, buy them pizza, give out gift cards, etc. And we would all set appointments. And I would walk out of there every Monday night, two or three hours of calling with eight, 12, 16, sometimes even 20 appointments. Whole week was booked because I didn't have a lot of time. But what I also did was any spare time I had, I would go out and door knock. So I remember one Friday getting out of school at about 11 driving about an hour, hour and a half to Willow Springs, Missouri, and door knocking about 175 doors for the day. I uh, went through a senior housing facility, about 125 doors. Hadn't hit my goal yet because my goal was to write six apps that day from cold door knocking. Okay, so then I went to an apartment building and door knocked another 50, and then it was like, I got my six, and it was like 9.45 p.m. at night. And the people were like, dude, you gotta stop, you gotta get out, you gotta stop knocking on my door, okay? And by cold calling and cold door knocking, which I didn't have leads. You guys have the Glen Gary leads, I hear, right? <laughs> I didn't have them. 
but I was committed to earning 100K. So I, ton of cold calling, ton of door knocking. I was somebody that was going to do whatever it took, no matter what. And after eight months, I had earned $117,361.13. Thank you. Cold calling, cold door knocking, 30, 35% commission level, selling one product, one carrier with no leads. Now, who in here believes that they can earn 100K with this freaking incredible opportunity? <laughs> like, it baffles me when I go to events like this and, and, and everyone isn't earning 100K. Right. <laughs> that's, how, that's how passionate I am about it. And I believe, and I'm gonna share some stuff, but I believe that every single person in this room can and will earn 100K in this organization if you listen to people like Nate, Marlon, Gus, some of these other guys and gals that are, that are doing it, right? And 2020 should be the year. Am I right? And it, it, you wouldn't be here if you didn't also believe it. You really wouldn't. All right, so I'm going to transition into, Nate wanted me to do some training. So I'm going to transition into some sales tips and some different things. Thank you, buddy. I'm going to share a little bit on the Elmo, which I've never used before, but it looks cool. It looks cool. So the first sales tip I want to talk about is how I believe that you should assume you're going to make every single sell. And I say that, and, and I'm, going to start with, I'm going to start light, right? That's easy, right? That's, everybody knows that. I have a sales team back at the office, and I told my sales team, I said, uh, I walked in one day, I, I, was, I was upset with their effort, and they're whining, complaining, you know, I'm feeding them leads nonstop for crying out loud. And I said, I'm going to do something with them. And it may totally backfire on me. I said, they each have like 5,000 contacts of people that like are insurance agents around the country or whatever. And I said, I want you to pick one name that is in your HubSpot account that's assigned to you that will never buy from us, and they are impossible to sell. I said, pick one. So at that time, this was several months back, I had maybe a year ago, I had, I had five salespeople. So they, I had them each write it down on a post-it note and hand it to me. And I said, if I do not close this person today, I will give you 100 bucks. <clears throat> Is that confidence? Is that belief? That's because I believe I'm, I'm going to make every single sell. At the end of the day, I'd only sold four. I didn't sell all five, but they stopped complaining after that. Okay? <laughs> they just did. So I believe that you should assume that you're going to make every single sell. Another thing that I also teach, another tip, and you want to definitely take a lot of notes the next 30 minutes. And I'm going to try to rush through this. I don't know if I have enough time or not. I teach a three-step process for overcoming any objection you ever hear. Agree, that's the first A. Answer, that's the second A. And ask, that's the third A. Agree, answer, and ask. I don't care what objection you get, that three-step process works. If I'm on the phone, hey, I'm not interested. I understand. It's my job to get you, get you the information. It's up to you with what you do with it. I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop this off, what do you think, in the morning or in the afternoon? Agree. Right? I hate your guts. I'm with you. Most people do until they get to know me. Okay? <laughs> what well, doesn't matter, right? Agree, answer, and ask. I'm not gonna to go too deep on a lot of this, but there's a lot of things that we teach and that we share, and we, we put up we put up four, five, six, seven videos every single week to help insurance agents. And that three-step process and always being in agreement, when I'm on the phone, I always finish with a question 100 percent of the time. Always. I never speak on the phone without finishing with a question because we we're trained that when I ask you a question to do what? Answer. Answer. And the person asking the questions is in, so why don't we ask a question every single freaking time? Okay, the third tip is I love to use hypotheticals. When I ask my wife, hey babe, where do you want to go to dinner? What do you think she says? I don't know. I don't know. That's exactly right. If you had to choose, where would you say? a powerful follow-up question. I don't know is not an answer. 
if you had to choose, what would you say? So for example, I was in Joplin, Missouri, probably six, seven years ago, selling a, I was training a new agent. We were selling life insurance out in Joplin, Missouri. And we were sitting there, and I was sitting with a gentleman. His name was Jerry. He was sitting across the room from me. He's at the couch across the room. I'm in a recliner across the room. The, the, the new agent's over here in another chair. I look, at the, I look at the gentleman. I said, Jerry, do, do, and I, I believe there's right ways to ask questions. Obviously, Nate's proved that today. I didn't even ask the question correctly, and I beat myself up after. Okay? But I said, sir, do you know where your policy is? Right? That's not the way to phrase it. However, he says what? No. I don't know. I said something that made no common sense, but it worked. And I still use it to this day. And I said, if you knew where it was, <laughs> where would it be? And he said, well, if I knew where it was, it'd probably be in that filing cabinet right across the room. I said, this one? The sitting right beside me? He said, yes. I said, okay, can I open it? He said, yes. I open it, guess what's sitting on the top? <laughs> 20 seconds ago, he didn't know where his insurance policy is. Now he does, miraculously, right? <laughs> I don't know is not an answer. I love to use hypotheticals, and you should always ask a follow-up question 100% of the time. Most people know the answer to any question you ask them, but we're just lazy. So always use hypotheticals. Also, another thing that I, I, I like to talk to insurance agents about because I think we're the worst at it is don't puke on your prospects. <laughs> A lot of insurance agents have the gift of gab. We like to vomit on people. <laughs> Having the gift of gab, I, I, anytime I, I interview somebody, they're like, I have the gift of gab. I'm great at sales. I can talk a lot. I'm like, please see yourself out. <laughs> great salespeople, do they listen or talk more? Which one? Listen. listen. We ask questions. We steer the conversation. We listen. And we don't puke. Okay? So that'll, maybe that visual will stick in your mind now. Okay, don't puke on the prospect. The next one is, the, there's a leap of faith little trial close that I use every once in a while. And I used it in Springfield, Missouri, uh, again, several years ago. I was sitting with, we'll just call them Mike and Betty. I use the word Betty a lot for, for, for prospects. Sitting with Mike and Betty. And, and I ask them, um, you know, we're talking about insurance. And they're like, well, hang on. They stop, they stop me, they're like, hey, somebody else was out here last week, we didn't buy from him, and if I have to pay for this with a bank account, I'm not going to do it because I haven't paid for, nobody's accessed my bank account in 40 years. I said, what about the city, you know, utilities, trash, sewer, etc., you know, nobody. Nobody has it, we had a problem 40 years ago, and no one will ever take money out of our bank account ever again. I thought, this is going to be fun. So I use what I call the leap of faith, which is, Mike and Betty, let's, let's play a little game. Let's, let's take you to a fairy tale world. Let's just assume in this fairy tale world that everything is perfect. Everything is fantastic. And there's never any mistakes ever. Let's just assume that when you do business with me today, because you will, that everything goes excellent. I don't make any mistakes. The company issues a policy immediately. Right, you love it when they when the bank sends the money to the insurance company. It's it's perfect as it's supposed to be. When you get the policy, everything looks appropriate. It's ex down to the penny what you're expecting to pay. The perfect day of every month. Nothing is out of the ordinary, and everything is exactly as it should be. If we lived in a fairy tale world like that, and something like that were to be the case, you'd probably feel more comfortable moving forward in that scenario. Am I right? And they're like, yeah, probably so. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, the, the, I got them to move a little bit, right? I'm over here. They're over here. I, I'm not going to get them here in three seconds. But slowly, slowly, I got them there. And about an hour and 15 minutes later, I walked out of there with a check that no one had ever gotten in 40 years, supposedly, by using the leap of faith trial close. Okay, I got about 20 minutes. I'm going to go I'm going to run through my appointment process, also my benefits presentation. There's a specific and I'll try to write 
more legibly than normal. My appointment process is exactly this. Step number one, warm up. I'm not going to dive too deep. I've got a ton of videos on YouTube. We've got almost 13,000 insurance agents that subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch our videos quite a bit. Warm up, fact find, present, even though that doesn't look like present, and close, and then the cool down. In the warm up, obviously you're getting to know them, warming them up, building a relationship. I believe the relationship is the key to our business. Fact finding, I'm asking any, anything related to fact finding to get the sale. Right? Unlike most in final expense, I, I don't ask about budget. I don't care about price. I don't care what they can afford. I don't even want them thinking about it. You know, that's just, that's just my opinion uh, because I, I don't sell on price. Then I move to present and close. And that's where I use this specific benefits presentation that I'm going to walk you through. Right? And in this benefits presentation, there's, I, I go over five benefits. I ask nine trial closes and show three options. Five benefits, nine trial closes, and three options. All right, so I'm going to put a little box over here. I don't know if you can even see it. No, you can't. What I'll do is I'll just put ticks at the bottom of that box for each one of the nine so that you can follow along with me. Okay. So what I do to start is, okay, Miss, Miss Betty, there's five benefits, and I'll, I'll move into their bubble, into their personal space. I'm not going to sit across the room and do this. It, it, it just ain't the same, right? I'm moving in for the next few minutes. Okay? If they're on the couch, I'm, I'm right there beside them. Okay? If they're in a recliner, I may go kneel by them you know, with a pad, and I'll walk through this. I'll say, okay, Miss Betty, this is what I do to close business, because I believe I would rather build such a good relationship and, and, and such good value that the product is sold before they actually see the quotes. And using this, it normally is. Who wants it to be sold before they even know how much it costs? Yes. I've collected bank account information before they even know how much it costs before. Who wants to know how to do that? Yep. Okay, good, perfect. So I'll ask, I'll say, Miss Betty, there's five benefits why my clients absolutely love us. And I wanna take a second and share that with you real quick. I'm assuming I can do that, right? Yes, okay, good, thank you. That was what I call the first trial close or, or minor agreement, right? That's number one. Then I'll say, okay, Miss Betty, there's the first benefit is that this policy is whole life. So I'll, I'll write it, I'll say it, and I'll explain it. Okay, so I'll say, Miss Betty, there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of policies out there where it doesn't last your entire life. It may end in a year, may end in five years, may end in 20 years, you know, may change in the future, right? If you're selling, whole, if, if you're selling term, you can change this and, and write coverage lock, right? It can be used anyway. And I'll explain how this compares to a lot of other options out there. And then I'll ask another minor agreement. Now, I'm assuming that you love that it's a whole life. Am I right, Miss Betty? Yes. Good. Okay, that's trial close number two. Then I'll move into benefit number two, which is a price lock. And I'll say, all right, Miss Betty, the amazing thing about the price lock and why you're going to love it so much is that the price is locked in forever. It will never go up. A lot of options out there, it changes when you're 65 or every year or every five years, or every 20 years. Even when you're age 80, they skyrocketed on you. I'm assuming that you do not want that to happen and that this one is extremely important to you. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Okay, that's the third one. Third benefit. In this case, I'll typically use double accident. You can use any that you prefer. Right? So I'll explain it, right? I'll explain double accident. And I'll say, most people don't pass away from an accident. However, if you do, it'd be nice to know that your you know, family gets 100,000 of coverage instead of 50,000. Correct? Yeah. Good. Okay. Then moves to number four. We've already had four trial closes or minor agreements. The fourth one is that it builds cash value. And I'll explain that, 
I'll explain how it builds cash value, and I'll say, you know what? We don't recommend that anybody takes money out of their policy, but it's nice to know that it's there. True? Okay, there's another minor agreement. We've got five out. Then we move to the fifth one, which has two parts. And I see Miss Betty, I'm a little biased, but my favorite benefit is that you get a local agent out of this. And I'll say there's two reasons why that's extremely important. There's an A portion and a B portion. I'll say, Miss Betty, if you need to change your address, beneficiary, bank account information, phone number, et cetera, you normally have to call a 1-800 number, sit on hold for 40 minutes, beat your brains in, hang up, call back tomorrow, and then maybe you'll eventually get help. Uh, instead, my clients pick up, their cell, pick up their phone, they call my cell phone direct, and I handle it immediately, and that burden is totally lifted. Is that pretty amazing? So that's the A portion. Minor changes. There's another trial close, minor agreement. Then I'll move to the B portion. I'll say, okay, Miss Betty, this one's, even, this one's the most important part. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, good. The most important part is that even more important than minor changes, when that day comes where you're no longer with us and your daughter, Susie, right, because you should definitely know the beneficiary name, you should get that in the fact-finding portion of the appointment, your daughter, Susie, has to go and collect on this policy. Now, she's also ha she also has to plan your funeral. Think about food for everybody. You've got family and friends coming in town. You've got to pick out, she's got to pick out everything. There's a lot going on. It's a lot of stress. It's, it's, you know, it's a tough time whether, whether she's celebrating your life you know, or grieving, however she prefers. No one wants to have to deal with that during that time, Miss Betty. So instead of Susie having to deal with all this and get claim paperwork notarized and sent off to the home office and get back and get death certificates and send everything off and get it back and then hopefully you get a check in a matter of weeks. Instead, Susie can call Cody and he'll take care of everything as fast as I possibly can and relieve that massive burden from her. You love that, don't you, Miss Betty? That's the seventh minor agreement trial close. We've finished all five benefits. Now there's two more. Now... I go a step further and say, of these five, Miss Betty, which one is your favorite? They say, well, I don't know. Well, if you had to choose, which one would you say? <laughs> well, probably the price lock. Okay, good. Excellent. Price lock. That's a great one. Wonderful. Right? There's another minor agreement. They chose one. Now we move into showing three options. And before I show them three options, and I typically have the options wrote, written out before I actually start this so I can go right into it, okay? And so what I do now is I say, well, Miss Betty, I'm about to show you three options. They come with all five of these benefits, especially the price lock, which I know you love. I even know which one you're going to choose. But I need a favor from you. When I show you these three options, I just need you to tell me which one you're most comfortable with. You can do that for me, can't you? Okay, good. Number nine. Now, I will move into showing the three options. And the way I'll lay it out, I'll just use these numbers for example. I will show one that's over 100 one that's about 80, and one that's about 60 from largest to smallest. The brain is wired that if you do it from largest to smallest, the top one seems really valuable, and you're taking it away from me by showing me smaller options, but if you show them smallest to largest, you're not as confident in the bigger ones, number one. And number two, it feels like you're trying to upsell me. Okay, so I always show over 100, 80, 60, and I go from largest. Got some more time. How about that? And I go from largest to smallest. And I say, first option, 25,000 for 110, 20,000 for 82, or 15,000 for 61. Which one makes the most sense to leave to Susie? What 
And what do you think they say? 80% of the time they choose the one in the middle. Now, I always average between 80 and $90 a month, even selling final expense. Most insurance agents would walk in here and say the average is 40 to 50 bucks a month. If you don't know what you're doing, that is absolutely true. Okay? Absolutely true. But if you position it correctly, if you sell on relationship and value and you build the benefits and you're so good at the benefits presentation, because when I was a new agent, I didn't, I, I didn't think benefits were important. I didn't think any of these other things were important. I'm like, you know what? Who, who, who buys off features and benefits and people and everything else? Well, that's kind of what people do. So I'll show these. I'll get them to choose one. And I'll say, excellent. That's exactly the one I thought you were going to pick. Let's see if we can get you approved. What's your full legal name? Who thinks they can do that? Who thinks they can do that? Are you still with me? Who thinks they can do that? Who's going to earn 100 k in 2020? I thought I'd get a little more energy than that, but okay, all right. There we go. There we go. So that is the... Appointment process with benefits presentation. One of the things I want to... You like that? Thank you, buddy. One thing I want to move into now is something called a no callback close. I used to listen to Brian Trace. Who loves when people say, I want to think about it? I want you to call me back. I'm not ready to make a decision. Majority of the time... I can still get them to make a decision on the first appointment. Would you like to know how? Yeah. I can save it for later. If... No. Okay, good. It's called the no callback close. I heard Brian Tracy use it about a decade ago when I first started listening to audiobooks. Like everybody has said, serious people take their profession serious. They learn, they listen, they engross. I mean, they, they know that someone knows what they need to know. So I listened to Brian Tracy's first ever book I ever listened to or read, The Art of Closing the Cell. I would listen to it in my car like crazy. Every CD, all day, every day. And in that book, he talks about how he's going, he's going to all these homes and selling, and everybody's, he's a new salesperson. Everybody's like, I want to think about it. I want you to call me back. I'm not sure. And he's thinking, Oh my goodness, I have a gold mine. Everyone's going to call me back at once. I'm not going to be able to handle all the business. I'm not going to know what to do. And wow, things are going really well. <laughs> Who else thought that as a new sales rep like me? Yeah. What he quickly learned. I want to think about it. I want you to call me back. Is polite customer speak for goodbye forever. We will never meet again. So as he did, and, he, and, and what he did, was he did this thing called a no callback close. I've used it numerous times. I've trained on it and heard other people use it with success because it works. There's a non-aggressive version and an aggressive version. Are you guys more non-aggressive or aggressive, you think? You, you think you're aggressive? We'll find out. Okay. All right. So... The non-aggressive version, I was sitting with an agent, actually it was a veteran agent a long time ago, when I was listening to this book and I was using everything and I was trying everything, I'm like, man, I'll, I'll do anything. And we were sitting in a home with Mary in Niangua, Missouri, little bitty town. And we get to the end of the presentation and the veteran agent thinks he's training me. Okay, He's about to, he's about to learn though. <laughs> and he said... We showed the options. She's like, man, this is a, this is a big decision. Oh, it's like, and she said, what? I need to think about it. I'm like, perfect. I actually get excited. I love hearing that now. So, so what I said, which is weird, right? So what I use in front of a veteran agent in a home is, and I said this, and I, back then, I was using the non-aggressive version. Okay, I've, I've grown up since then, all right? <laughs> the non-aggressive version, slightly. The non-aggressive version sounds something like this. Miss Betty, I understand. 
Always agree, right? However, we have a, unfortunately, we have a no callback policy in our office. We get along perfect. This makes absolute sense for you to do. You're getting, in this case, more coverage for the same amount of money and getting a bunch of cash value back in your pocket. You need it, you want it, you can afford it. Why don't, why don't you just take it? And you should have seen the veteran agent's eyes. He's like, what the freak did he just say? He's probably really like, I hope it works, though. And she says, so remember it like it was yesterday. She's sitting in a recliner. I had already moved over on my knees beside her in the recliner because that's what you're supposed to do. And she said, well, if I can't call you back, then I guess I got to take it. And she did. $300 a month for final expenses, pretty good. And most people would have done what? You take as much time as you need. That's the non-aggressive version. Who wants the aggressive version? You sure? Are we still awake? You with me? You with me? All right, here's the aggressive version. Okay? The aggressive version is similar with a twist. You ready, Marlon? I don't know. <laughs> you said, I don't know. You are. All right, so here it is. You ready? Okay, so, Miss Betty, I can understand why you want to think about it. Unfortunately, we have a no callback policy in our office. And the reason that's in place is because we've had people in the past say they're going to think about it. They never actually think about it. Six months goes by, they pass away while thinking about it. And their family, who do you think their family blames for not helping them make a decision when they should have? Me. I'm not letting that happen again. You are, we get along so well and, and you are so important to me that I'm not letting that happen. You need it, you want it, you can afford it, it makes absolute perfect sense. I'm gonna help you get qualified. What's your full legal name? Nice. You like that? Thank you. Hey, who's gonna try that? Okay, 12 of us, who else? All right, aggressive or non-aggressive? All right, I like this. It's a, it's a good crowd, okay? Got about 11 minutes, all right. I'm telling you, the first time you use it, and I realize you can't, you know, Nate's strict on the phones, all right? Later, I would love for you to follow me on Instagram, add me as a friend on Facebook, whatever, and the first time you use it, and it works, let me know, okay? I would love to hear that, because it will. If you use it right, it will, I promise. Another thing I want to talk through real quick is I'm a numbers guy. Who else is a numbers person? Okay, good, thank you. Who in this room selling insurance made over $100,000 in 2019? All right, and it's, it's okay if you didn't. You're going to this year. Okay, good. So, what's the best way to figure out how to make 100K and to go do it? Learn from someone that is doing it. Okay, good. Good. What I like to do is I like to do the math. I want to know what I need to do to make that a reality. So let, you, can do, you, you want to do some math together? Yeah. So that from the rest of the year, you know what to do, and then it's up to you whether you do it or not. It's not on me anymore because you actually know how to go and do it. Okay? So I'm going to use, I'm going to use, what's the most common number that ever, and I already gave it to you, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's the most common number that every new insurance agent wants to make? $100,000. There's no rhyme or reason. Everybody wants to make 100 k though, right? I was the same way, so it's okay. So let's use $100,000. We're going to divide that by what we feel is the average APV for a final expense policy. Now, I'm going to be conservative, and I have data to back it up. 
It's about $61 a month. That's $732 per year. So let's divide 100K divided by $732. Somebody do that for me. Should be about 136 or something like that. Oh, I'll, I'll use mine then. Sorry, Nate. There you go. Okay, do do it. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so 136 policies. Who thinks they can write 136 life insurance policies in one year? I know you can. Whether you believe it, you can or not, you can, okay? So now, let's take 136 divided by 50 weeks. I'm going to give you two weeks of vacation. Who's cool with two weeks of vacation? Yeah, me too. Or, uh, maybe, maybe you're aggressive. Maybe you don't need vacation. So, so what's that number, sir? Does that surprise anybody? 2.72 policies per week. Let me say it again. 2.72 <laughs> policies per week. Nate's cleaning out his ears. <laughs> right? 2.72. Let's round up to three. Wonderful idea. So here's what we're going to do now. Let's call it three. I'll just write apps, applications. That's shorter. So three a week. What's the average closing rate when someone sits in a home? Say you sit in with 10, how many, not, not Nate Offert or Marlon, <laughs> but if you sit with 10, about how many people will you close typically? Six. You, you want to be conservative? You want to call it five? 50%? New agents can close 50%. All right, so we'll be conservative. I don't want you to think I, these are your numbers, right? This, this isn't mine. None of this is. So let's take that divided by 50%. Close. Six sits per week. You need to sit down with, say it with me, six people to make $100,000. When I come back in a year and ask that question, I expect a lot more hands to be raised. I really do. I'm serious. Okay? So, thank you. So now, let's take it a step further. How many people, let, let's just say that you set 10 appointments. About how many will stick and you will, they will be at the home and you'll sit down with them? Okay. I'm going to use two-thirds to be conservative because I've seen anywhere from 60 to 80% as well. Okay. I'll be conservative again. So, divided by 66%. Sit rate brings us to nine set appointments per week. And they say this business is hard. <laughs> and they say that 9.2 out of every 10 fell. Who, who can set nine appointments a week? I'll move in and help you if that's what it takes. I'm telling you. You can set nine appointments a week. I was doing it cold calling. They give you this stuff called leads now, where people are like asking for insurance. It's weird. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Which we just happen to generate over 100,000 leads a month in our companies. We have five companies now, because I'm an entrepreneur. I can't quit starting freaking companies. And across those five companies, we do over a half a million a month. Leads, marketing, training, coaching, and our 8% Nation Conference. And what I did my first year is I did the math. So I have a, like I do for everything, triple S system every week. Set Sit, sell. In your case, set nine, sit with six, and sell three. And if you want to change the numbers and make them bigger, I would do that. What I did as a new agent was I tried to hit this. I tried to set 15, 
sit with 10 and sell five. I was on a lower comp rate. I didn't know what I was doing. I could, you know, couldn't spell the word insurance, no product knowledge, couldn't sell. I was horrible. I was good with people. But that's what I strive to do every single week as a new insurance agent. I got a few more minutes. And I want to ask you guys real quick, what, what do successful people do? Each and every day. Let's just name a few ideas. That's good. I like that. Work on themselves every day. Yeah, they do. So, there's a few things I do every day. Because I want to be the best version of me that I can be. Who else wants to be the best version of you that you can be? Good. Good. So, I'm not to Marlin's level yet, but I do get up between 5 a.m. and 5.59 a.m., which is called the 5 a.m. club by some friends of mine in uh, Florida. I work out every day. Went to the gym and ran 15 minutes this morning. And I write down my goals every single morning. Now, you've heard that a lot today. And I also either read or learn or watch something to get better and to become a, as, as, as Will Smith says, a, a master of my craft. Because I'm 29, when I'm 39 or 49 or 59 or 69 like Nate, or <laughs> I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to, but I don't want to say, well, I could have done this, or I, maybe I should have actually tried. Or maybe I should have read this book. Or maybe I should have worked out. Or maybe I should have got more serious. Maybe I should have woke up earlier. Maybe I should have listened to the audio 200 times. So I want to challenge you to do whatever it takes to succeed. I'm of the mindset that anyone in our industry can succeed. Some will. Some won't. So what? I finish it with who's next. Nate's got shuck, shuck them or something back there. but <laughs> Some will, some won't, so what, who's next? A lot of you are talented enough to make $100,000. A lot of you know more about insurance products than I do. But we'll be, what will be the difference maker between the winners and the losers in this room is some will just take it slightly more serious than others. So I want to challenge you for a second to take it a little more serious in 2020. All right, if you think these seven mistakes are good, you're going to love the last video. How to present four insurance products at once in a bundle. It's right there. See you in there. Hey, who doesn't want to sell four insurance products at once, right? You're thinking, dude, I'm selling one policy. Why don't I just sell four right now?